In this video for the 72DO Plus, we're going to discuss the user control, the touch areas, and the screen layout for the instrument. So let's begin. The 72DO Plus is a mostly touch screen controlled instrument, but it also has hard keys located on the left hand side, which also include an adjustment knob. So in this video, we're going to cover more of the touch control features of the instrument, the hard key uh, controls and adjustments with the knob were covered in a separate video. So let's begin. When we look at the display, the first thing we want to take a look at is the burger menu up at the top. Uh, that's used to select submenus, anything from my application. My application is where you store your transducer setups or your applications. Um, you can actually scroll up and down and select them. Um, it's going to add them. The la latest ones that you added are going to be on top. Um, you can also use this to create new application setups. And once you create them, they'd be listed on this uh, screen here. Um, so for a basic user, when they turn the unit on, it would come up with the screen first. Then they'd be able to select a setup. So in this case here, I'm just going to select plastic. And um, it's going to recall all the parameters and setup information for that application that was stored. And at this point, I can simply just couple and go. So your basic user would turn the unit on, go to this screen, select their application, and then be ready to go. They might verify calibration and then and then be off taking measurements. Okay, we also have in here things like save applications. So this is where you'd save an application that you've done or set up. Uh, you have the configuration, which is the actual parameters that you can control uh, for the setup. Uh, some advanced user setups and also settings. Settings are going to be mostly the sub menus for things that control um, things like units, measurement mode, whether you want to be in thickness or velocity mode, unit types, uh, inches or millimeters. Uh, all those things are controlled in this menu. Hold blank, uh, measurement rate, um, averaging, uh, things of that nature. Uh, you can use the arrow key pointing to the left to go back to that menu screen. Um, you can also go into the system menu. Uh, where you can click on other icons such as the display that allow you to change the color scheme, the brightness, the rectification, um, display output, zoom, things of that nature. And again, you can click back at any time. Uh, you can go to the hardware menu, uh, which will give you some software diagnostics and some testing, and you can go to the about menu. The about menu will give you information such as the legal requirements, regulatory, uh, battery info. Um, the lock is also located in here where it turn on the password lock. You also have this update uh, version updates. This is where you'd be able to see what the current software version is that is running on the instrument. Uh, you can also check for updates. Uh, to update this instrument currently, you would load the software onto a thumb drive and plug it into the instrument, and then you'd go to this screen and and click on check for updates. Um, it'll go out to the thumb drive. If there's new software on it, it would ask you if you want to upgrade it and you can upgrade from there. So to get back to the main menu, uh, if I hit the back arrow key here, I'm going to go back to this, this uh, setup menu. If I hit the home key, which is located just under the adjustment knob, I'm going to back all the way back out to the measurement screen. So moving towards the right, uh, the next control I see here is the wave adjust. Um, so right now, there's currently transducer parameters for this application called Plastic that I recalled. When I press the Wave Adjust key, it's going to bring up the actual transducer parameters. So things like max um, main bang blank, interface blank, initial gain, max gain, and slope. You'll also notice over on the far right-hand side, it says one of two. There's a second line of controls that control things like um, the polarity of the echoes, either positive or negative. And again, I can switch back and forth between line one and line two by clicking the uh, control on the end uh, on the bottom or right hand corner. Uh, we will cover the controls and what they how they work and how they function in a separate video. Moving further towards the right at the top, you have an IDF, which is the ID file. If you click on that, you're going to bring up the file manager uh, file functions. 
you can start a new inspection. If you want to save data, you can review the current one. If there's any readings in it, um, you can actually go down here and you can actually use the knob and you can scroll through and look at the readings that were saved in it. Um, I can press the home key to return again. Uh, other functions in here are things like the file manager. Uh, this is where you'd have your application setups and we'll cover another video on how to actually go in there and delete these. Um, if you have an application set up and you want to export it to, an, to the thumb drive, you can go to this menu, select, select it, select export, uh, and you can export it to a thumb drive and then you could import that setup into a, another 72 VL plus. Okay. Um, under that, we have the layout. That's going to uh, control what you see on the screen. So right now I'm in the full A scan mode. I could also be looking at a B scan, which would be a, a cross reference, cross sectional reference of thickness. Um, I also have the ability to go to A scan and B scan. So vertically, you'd have your ultrasonic A scan, and then you'd also have your B scan showing you uh, the profile thickness. Uh, you could also look at what's called a trend line. And a trend line is basically a strip chart. So in this case here, we have two echoes that we're actually tracking. One is the interface echo, and the second is the back wall echo. And if these were varying in thickness, what you'd see is you'd see slight changes in the signal um, where the trend line would actually change. Uh, we also have a zoom function uh, that will take the measurement it's on screen and it will center it and zoom into the measurement. Okay, so I'm going to switch this back to a scan. This uh, location here is where the current ID is. Um, if I go ahead and hit save, the save key, which is under the home key, the save send key, um, you can see that my ID will increment two, three, so on and so forth. Depending on what type of file you have in there, uh, pressing this key will either send it to the uh, external device or save it to the internal data logger. Moving even further over, what we see is the uh, thickness display. Here you have your thickness value um, and the units. In this case here, it's mils. Um, if you had min and max, those would also be located in these areas as well. Above that, you have the transducer that is currently being selected in the setup, which is M2104. It says M2, which is the mode two. Uh, it has 70 hertz, which is the update rate. Uh, this is showing you that I do have a, um, a Wi-Fi dongle plugged in, in the instrument. Next to that, there's an icon for the thumb drive. If a thumb drive was plugged in, it would show you that the thumb drive is plugged in and recognized. And over here is the plug indicating whether you're plugged into the main power supply or not. Um, that will indicate that you are on, on main power. And then you have the battery symbol, um, which tells you the status of the battery, how full it is. What you'll also notice here is you have the name of the application setup. Um, the reason that it's in yellow here is because I recalled the setup and then I made some changes to it. So since I made some adjustments to it, it, it actually turns yellow and puts a star next to it. So if I want to save those changes, I can click on the burger menu and say save application. In this case here, I can do save or save as, or I can disregard any changes that I made. If I press the save key, you'll notice that the uh, application turns back to being white. Uh, that means that I have recalled it and it's not currently been edited in any way. Okay, so going into the controls of the instrument a little bit further, we see that on the bottom, on the bottom left-hand side, we have the control for the delay, and then we have the control for the range. So if I single click on the delay, it's going to turn yellow, and then I can use the adjustment knob to adjust it. If I click it a second time, it's going to underline the, the delay, and that's going to be a course adjustment. So making adjustments there when it's on course are going to be much greater steps um, as opposed to when it's not underlined. Okay. 
And the same thing for the range. If I click on the range, single click will turn it yellow. And I'm on a, uh, a fine adjustment there. And if I double click it, it turns um, underlined. And now that's a more coarse adjustment. I also have the zoom here. If I click on the zoom, I'm going to go to what they call a split screen zoom. Uh, in this case here, you have a full waveform located on the top section of the display. And then you have the zoomed in area on the bottom section. I can also control um, with my fingers doing pinch and, and sliding. I can control the position of um, the zoomed in area. Okay, and I can also use two fingers and I can pinch it in. Or bring it out. And then single finger and I can move it to a different area. If I want to go out of zoom, I just simply click on the zoom here or go in here. I can also manually adjust it. If I click on the start zoom, um, I can use the knob and I can actually scroll and move it. This is nice if you want to fine tune the position of it. I can also do the width as well. And again, there's also control here where if you hit it the second time, you're going to be in the course adjustment much faster. And if you hit it where it's not underlined, it's going to be a more fine tune or um, control of, the, of it. It's going to go a lot slower, but you're going to have a lot fire, finer control over it. If I want to get out of this, I can hit the arrow key, go back to a standard zoom. And to get out of the zoom completely, I can hit the home key and go out of zoom. Okay. Um, that basically covers the basic control over the instrument. Again, getting to the software uh, setups, here's all the parameters. Um, you can simply touch on the icon related to what you want to do. You have a system setup um, where you can set up the date, time, communication, hardware setup, and about. Um, this concludes the video talking about how to use the 72DL Plus, the touchscreen area, and its controls.